to just rip the band-aid off. Now, a fellow comedian at the club said the performance was, quote, classic Louis, really, really good. But we have got no response to the appearance as yet from those many women that Louis C.K. abused over the years. Sandra. Jonathan Hunt from Los Angeles for us. Thank you. Oh, back here in New York City, it's another hot and humid day outside, but elsewhere in the country, man oh man, old man winter is getting a head start. Would you believe this? The first snowfall of the season coming up. We'll tell you where. Get ready. <laughs> If you're a veteran, own a home, and need money for your family, call New Day USA to use your valuable VA home loan benefit. Thank you, Admiral. Unless you borrow up to 100% of your home value. Thank you, Admiral. With today's rising home values, that can mean more money for you and your family. Thank you, Admiral. Money to pay down debts and get financial peace of mind. Thank you, Admiral. We'll do everything we possibly can to get you approved. Call 1-844-383-1571. You shouldn't be rushed into booking a hotel. With Expedia's add-on advantage, booking a flight unlocks discounts on select hotels until the day you leave for your trip. Add-on advantage, only when you book with Expedia. Hi, I'm Joan London. Today's senior living communities have never been better. With amazing amenities like movie theaters, exercise rooms and swimming pools, public cafes, bars and bistros, even pet care services. And there's never been an easier way to get great advice. A Place for Mom is a free service that pairs you with a local advisor to help you sort through your options and find the perfect place. A Place for Mom. You know your family. We know senior living. Together, we'll make the right choice. Any object, any surface. If you've got a life, you've got a Swiffer. I've had the opportunity to speak with dozens of people 50 and over who, like me, are actual customers of the AARP Auto and Home Insurance Program from the Hartford. And over that time, I noticed a common theme. People appreciate the value they get with the Hartford. We originally signed up for automobile and homeowners together. The Harper was the only one that was able to save us money. That's a good feeling, huh? Yeah. yeah. It's good to have everything bundled together. Yeah. To get your no obligation quote, call the Hartford at 1-800-684-1643 or go to gohartfordauto.com. It was a uh, hail storm that came through and it had some damage to the automobile as well as the home, but the Hartford stepped in there and took care of it. For an insurance company to go above and beyond, I would say that Hartford has been exceptional from the, from the get-go. Join the millions of customers 50 and over who trust the Hartford. Call the Hartford at 1-800-684-1643 to get a no-obligation quote or go to gohartfordauto.com. As it happens, as news unfolds, follow it all live with the Fox News Update. No one brings it to you like Shepard Smith. Plus, Henry and Shimkus have all the latest. Follow Fox News Update for exclusive content only on Facebook. Tuesday, late August, but we're talking about winter now. It's still months away, but you'd never know out west. Check this scene out. An unseasonably cold storm system dropping several inches of snow on parts of Wyoming, Montana, and Idaho. The first snow of the season, and more is expected for areas above 6,000 feet. Meanwhile, summer is not going down without a fight around here. Millions of Americans are under heat advisories or warnings. This week, New York City, a high of yeah. 94 degrees today. That Eric. is beautiful, but it's nuts. <laughs> August 28th. Get ready. Yeah. It's coming right around the corner. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Outnumbered starts now. Take care. This is a Fox News alert. Justice Department official Bruce Orr right now facing questions on Capitol Hill amid new revelations about his numerous contacts with the author of the infamous Trump dossier. 
ex-British spy Christopher Steele. This is Outnumbered. I'm Katie Pavlich, and here today, Fox News correspondent Molly Line, Fox News contributor Lisa Booth, former director of strategic communications for Hillary Clinton, Adrian Elrod, and joining us on the couch today for the first time, Christian Whiten, former senior State Department advisor for President Donald Trump, and George W. Bush, and senior fellow at the Center for National Interest. You are outnumbered for Welcome, the first Christian. time. Welcome, Christian. Thank you. Great to be here. We are very happy to have your expertise in the State Department for George President Bush and President Trump here today. Yeah. So, C couple things that uh, are on your level of experience with this show today. Yeah, we've got just a couple <laughs> things, so we will get to the news as soon as we get to it. All right, here's video of DOJ official Bruce Orr this morning heading into a closed-door interview before the House Oversight and Judiciary Committees. Much of that interview expected to focus on the anti-Trump dossier, which was being funded by the DNC and Hillary Clinton during the 2016 campaign. Fox's chief intelligence correspondent, Catherine Herridge, catching up with Orr in the hallways of Capitol Hill. Watch. Mr. Orr, we have a series of questions from Fox News. Mr. Orr, who authorized your contact with the FBI? Did anyone within the Justice Department know you were contacting the FBI as a back channel for Christopher Steele, the British spy? Not much interest in answering any questions. Orr has linked to Fusion GPS, the opposition research firm behind the Trump dossier. Glenn Simpson, co-founder of Fusion GPS, hired Steele, and Orr's wife, Nellie, also worked for Fusion GPS as a contractor during the 2016 campaign. Republican Mark Meadows taking part in the interview today, saying that he believes 99% of DOJ and FBI workers are patriots, but the actions of some officials should raise alarm bells. Watch. I think our, really our republic in, in the integrity of the FBI and DOJ is at stake. We have about seven or eight that took things into their own hand, and so it's the credibility of, of really Lady Justice that should have a blindfold, and yet we're seeing that they were peeking and trying to tilt justice one way or another based on their own political bias. So Christian, we'll go to you first and get your take on this as a former employee of the government. Uh, it's probably not a good thing that he's getting hauled up from his perspective <laughs> to answer these questions. We're going to hear a little bit about what happened based on what we are told by Congress in answering the questions. But what is your perspective about what's going on today? Yeah, it's never good if you're a bureaucrat to suddenly be on the front of newspapers and being featured in every uh, news story, at least anyone who's bothering to report this. Um, you know, this is part of the 99 percent of the FBI being patriots, I think, is a great um, statistics, because if this type of phony evidence were to arrive at an FBI field office out in real America, uh, it would have been discounted. The Steele dossier would have never seen the light of day. Average FBI agents have to meet very high standards standards of evidence. Um, and yet you see again with Orr and his colleagues, the FBI lovers, um, a politicized headquarters of the FBI, and not just one that was there under President Obama, one that has continued under Jeff Sessions, who has sort of not ever gotten control of this department. So Lisa, Bruce Orr is there today voluntarily, but there could have been a question of subpoena moving forward if he wasn't willing to come testify behind closed doors about his involvement with the dossier and Christopher Steele. Right, and lawmakers have been trying to get him to talk, I think, for about five or nine months now. And the reason why Bruce Orr is of such interest is because of his connections to the unverified dossier that was used to obtain a FISA warrant on Carter Page. And those connections are serving as an intermediary between Christopher Steele, the author of the dossier, and the FBI, even after he was fired uh, for violating FBI rules by leaking to the press and also his wife, Nellie Orr, that worked for Fusion GPS. And what I am certainly interested in is the fact in documents that were turned over to Congress or had written that Christopher Steele said that Comey's firing made him nervous that that would expose them. Mm -hmm. So what are you worried about being exposed? And you can look at things about, you know, Nellie Orr, the fact that he was fired, still being used as a source. Uh, troubling, he failed to write that his wife um, worked for Fusion GPS in ethics forms. Rod Rosenstein also wasn't aware that he was serving as an intermediary. So there are a lot of things here that I think Congress are going to try to get to the bottom of. And there's a question of the funding here, Adrian, and the connection to the Clinton campaign. Is it appropriate for someone who is working in the Department of Justice to be in contact with an, a, a opposition research firm that was being paid by the Clinton campaign? Well, we do know that his wife worked there, right? So, like, the, Washington, D.C. is a small place. There's a lot of people I don't know, but who are, directly the tie to the Clinton campaign in terms of the funding going for the dossier. Was, again, we talked about this so many times. It was opposition research, um, which was in a dossier. So, again, you're using facts here when you're using fact-based evidence that is backed up by citations, which is what was in this dossier. Are you saying the dossier is true? Because that's been proven... 
I'm saying, that, well, no, false. but there are absolutely po- f- things in the dossier that are true. Absolutely. Like what? But <laughs> there, I mean, we're talking about we're talking about Bruce Orr right now. Right, and Bruce Orr is connected to the dossier through his wife, who helped uh, fund the research but, and do the research. But here, yes, but here, so here's the about point: the Clinton campaign and their involvement with the Justice Department under Obama to go after uh, an opposition party. Here's the point that I think that we need to be looking at here: Why are Republicans holding this this uh, hearing today in a closed door format? Right. If they really think that, that Bruce Orr has a lot to say, then open it up. Let's be transparent. Let's have an open hearing as opposed to a closed door hearing. I mean, look, we'll see what happens today um, from this hearing. We'll see if Republicans leak anything out or if they, um, you know, give a public statement post the hearing. But um, again, I think this is Don't just another. But isn't it a conflict of interest if his wife worked for Fusion GPS and he's still serving as an intermediary after Christopher Steele was fired? With no, the I don't think it. I think it, absolutely, I don't think it's a conflict of interest at all because I think that a lot. Why of, do you think he feels a lot of on spouses? Forms, I think well, he probably should have. Again, there's a lot of information that we need to know, but I think it's completely unfair to tie him to something just because his wife was involved in something. Well, this does seem to be the beginning of the the fact-finding behind closed doors. We have an interview coming up in the next hour with Congressman Darrell Issa, who's been in there. And, of course, I would imagine he's asking a lot of questions about conflict of interest, about potential biases. Uh, And just kind of the fact-finding here. We know that Christopher Steele got the boot in 2016 in November, and yet information was still being funneled. And Bruce Orr, we know from some text messages that Catherine Herridge, through her exceptional reporting, has uh, brought to light, had showed that there were some communications still going on. Then I, why get, is not I, get, I want to get to Congressman Mark Meadows uh, and what he wants to ask uh, Bruce Orr, and then I'm going to get Christian's reaction. I think that later reporting today would suggest that perhaps the involvement, who authorized uh, Bruce Orr to get involved, if there was someone who did that, those are the critical questions that have to be answered. Christian, your reaction? Yeah, who did what when? I mean, really, how this thing was set in motion. The dossier was fundamentally fake. It had fake information that Donald Trump was compromised. It said that people were places that they weren't, like in Prague. That was used to send spies into the Trump campaign. And just to circle back to an earlier point, all of this activity at the Justice Department should be known by now. We're a year and a half into the Trump administrations. And again, Jeff Sessions, and it's not just the Russia thing. He's been fundamentally disappointing on a number of things, like going after sanctuary cities, uh, antitrust against these big guys in Silicon Valley, uh, enforcing the Second Amendment and judicial things. It's really just sort of a mess over there at the, at the Justice Department. Also, to Adrian's earlier point, I don't think we know if Bruce, we don't know what conversations happened behind the scenes with congressional investigators and Bruce Orr and his team. So I don't think we know if he would have even accepted speaking into an open uh, forum and an right. open hearing. So, I mean, that could also be part That's of... True. And you can also be dealing with classified information, which is why maybe uh, Congressman wanted to have an open conversation behind closed doors. Also, without the media fanfare that comes with these open hearings, as we saw when Peter Schrock testified, you had Democrats standing up and applauding during the hearing and doing everything they could. And it takes some of that political drama away. Exactly. Take it away and try to get to the substance and the questions. But we also also know that when Republicans have held a lot of these closed door hearings, information is selectively leaked out. And that's why I think Adam Schiff never leaks anything. That's why. That's why I think it's important that you have these open hearings when possible. Christian, I think you want to respond to her, and then we'll move on to the next topic. (laughs) You know, I think the more that we get out, this may have actually been at Orr's risk. He is supposedly playing ball to an extent with the investigators. We'll see after today. So, but yeah, we do need to get all the facts on this out in the public and understand why the Obama administration decided to spy on the Trump campaign based on phony evidence. Okay, all right. And the public, of course, interested as well. So hopefully we will get a little, a few details out of there, maybe perhaps later on today. Uh, Michael Cohen. Cohen's lawyer, Lenny Davis, backing off two bombshell claims that he made about President Trump in an interview with the Washington Post. Davis now admitting he was the anonymous source in a July CNN story that reported Cohen had privately claimed President Trump knew in advance about that infamous Trump Tower meeting between Donald Trump Jr. and some Russians. Also the source on that story for the Post. Here is Davis making those claims last week. Watch. I can only say that he was present during a discussion with Junior and Dad. Mr. Cohen has knowledge on certain subjects that should be of interest to the special counsel. I believe that Mr. Cohen has direct knowledge that uh, would be of interest to Mr. Mueller. That suggests, I'm not sure it proves, that Mr. Trump was aware of Russian government agents hacking illegally 
And Davis is now expressing regret for his role in all of this, saying, quote, I should have been more clear that I could not independently confirm what happened. I regret my error. Davis also saying he can't corroborate his claim that Cohen has information suggesting Trump knew in advance about Russian hacking of the DNC servers during the 2016 election, saying, I'm not sure there's a possibility that's the case, but I am not sure. Uh, so to kick things off, Lisa, I want to start with you. Uh, is he just using and abusing the press? Should they have seen this coming? He's a longtime partisan. Well, I think he's full of it, obviously. And <laughs> if we're just being honest, yeah, he's completely full of it. And also, yeah, I mean, I think he understands that the press hates Trump so much that they'll pretty much report whatever is given to them that's negative to President Trump. But I, I think the big thing here is that we keep seeing these bombshell stories that would dramatically change sort of the way that the entire Russia investigation is viewed that end up being wrong. And you go back to even with ABC Brian Ross reporting that President Trump as a candidate told Flynn to talk to the Russians when really it was when he was president elect, which is basically standard operating procedure and isn't even a story or CNN with Donald uh, Trump Jr. Somehow that he, you know, he had access to the WikiLeaks uh, dump before it was released when in fact it was after when everyone in the world had access to the WikiLeaks dump. So we just keep seeing these really big stories that would potentially change the way all this is viewed that end up being wrong. And so I think when President Trump says fake news, these stories just solidify that and bring people into his camp that are like, yeah, you're, you're, you're right. There is fake news out there. And Lisa, to your point, Krishna, I want to bring you in. These were the stories that a lot of Democrats were waiting for. See, I knew it. Trump knew about the meeting. We, we knew it all along. Look, here's the proof. And then no, not the case. We, and, and it's walked back. Right. And fundamentally, you had this, this hope that there was some collusion between Trump and Russia that has gone by the wayside, essentially. Um, and so then there was this great hope that Trump's personal lawyer would have all these goods and now he's under pressure and he'll, he'll spill them to the press. That's the hope. And then you see the reality. You know, it's so weird in the first place, maybe not so much, that Michael Cohen, very interesting guy. I mean, if you were writing a political novel and wrote this guy in, <laughs> your editor would say that's too over the top. Like Take there's it so out. many characters, you know? really, in the whole saga. Yeah. It is. I mean, someone who taped their client, who charged AT&T 600 grand for insight on their client. I mean, I'd hate to think of one of a lawyer that I've used would do that. Um, and then hiring Lanny Davis, who is, um, uh, you know, a, uh, a you know political operative who worked for the Clintons, who is a sort of an attack dog at times for the Clintons. It's really, um, you know, and then, of course, to plead guilty for something that's actually not a crime, the campaign uh, finance violations that he pled guilty of, not a crime. I mean, really what he decided is to play to the left. He's going to become a poster child for the left, and maybe that'll get him a lighter sentence somehow from Mueller, from um, the uh, term prosecutors up here, and just doesn't really seem to be working. And, well, President, you, Trump, you, uh, President Trump did warn people against using Michael Cohen as a lawyer. <laughs> yeah, he did. My favorite thing about this is, is Lanny Davis trying to say that he made a mistake when based on the fact that he is a Clinton operative and has been for 20 years, the idea that this was a mistake is bogus. He knew exactly what he was doing. And the problem is that the, the accusation that was made is a very serious one. Lanny Davis, as an anonymous source, accused the president when he was a candidate of knowing about a meeting that, you know, accused him of that and then walked it back and said, actually, my client didn't know anything about that meeting, meaning uh, Michael Cohen, and then saying that the president, of course, didn't know about the meeting. So he made this huge accusation, made the president look like he was lying about it, and now there are certain people in the media who won't retract the story <laughs> as they well, should. Well, the CNN also says they have multiple anonymous sources. Oh, how can you trust any of those multiple if this Lanny source Davis is wrong? Is, yeah. like who, if, it, if their anonymous sources are people like Lanny Davis, well, who but are that's not why they're retracting your the former story, candidate, then they should really think about because they what say that they have their multiple sources. sources are. How did they have trust any of them? The other source was Lanny Davis just using a different voice. The other source was so Michael Cohen, Lanny Davis. Or someone tweeted, it's uh, Hillary Danny Clinton Davis. <laughs> yeah. Get it? Just switch it. Well, I just want to add to your little screenplay here that it is kind of insane that Lan you've got Lanny Davis representing Danny Michael Lewis. Cohen and you've got Rudy Giuliani representing Donald Trump. So that just adds to this whole sort of, you know, the, the, the Hollywood screenplay you could never write. And, and does that speak August, to, yes. the, to the media using these anonymous sources and believing things too quickly, particularly when you know people's backgrounds? But if they use the anonymous, these are not, this anonymous, Lanny Davis is not a whistleblower who needs protection, who is working deep inside a government agency and is fearing retribution for speaking out anonymously. That is when you use anonymous sources, when there are people who look at corruption, know corruption is going on, and they need protection in the press because they're trying to get their story out. 
Lanny Davis, and as a journalist, you should know, is a political operative, and he shouldn't be able to operate anonymously as a source because he has nothing to lose. He is not needing protection under the Whistleblower Protection Act. He is a political operative trying to get his word out in an anonymous piece to accuse like the Rudy president Giuliani. of lying about a meeting that has to do with the Mueller investigation. And we'll see, too. I'm very interested in seeing how Lanny Davis now moving forward in some of these interviews is what sort of credibility, what lens do people right. look at him through? Is credibility right. completely burned? And also the exactly. credibility of, of Michael Cohen and what well, does this mean and for And he already kind of lacked and credibility to begin with, so this really But, but I help. also think it's important not to forget that Rudy Giuliani has also made a lot of discrepancies in the media, too. So, I mean, he's, mm -hmm. he's had to walk back some comments as well. So There's a difference between Rudy Giuliani walking it back and the media not correcting it. Lanny Davis has walked it back, but there are certain people and reporters who have refused to correct the record, and they should if they want to maintain any kind of credibility on the story that they wrote. All right, we are about to get a new read on the high stakes midterms as voters head to the polls for primaries in three states today. The big races we are watching and the potential impact for both parties and for President Trump's agenda. Plus the White House touting the president's trade agreement with Mexico. Will Canada also jump on board? What it all means for workers and businesses here at home. It opens up a lot of markets. It protects uh, intellectual property. It actually extends some patents and copyrights for uh, new drugs. All this is very helpful. It protects workers. This program is brought to you by Lear Capital. Do you know which investment could be your best performer this year? Stocks, real estate, bonds, none of the above. It's silver. It's trending high. And if silver returns to its all-time high, that's over a 200% increase. Call now to get this free report. First-time callers also get this free one gram silver bar. If I could only invest in one thing, it'd be silver. Silver is running out, it's in short supply, it is one of the greatest investments you could have right now. Call Lear Capital for your free report, Sky High Silver, and get the indicator that over the past 40 years has accurately predicted silver increases of 200% or more. Don't wait. Call now to get the report and ask how you can get up to $2,000 in free silver in your hand or in your IRA. This offer ends soon. Call 1-800-927-2400. 1-800-927-2400. That's 1-800-927-2400. All right, I brought in new Max Protein. To give you the protein you need. With less of the sugar, you don't. I'll take that. 30 grams of protein and one gram of sugar. New Ensure Max Protein and two great flavors. My mom is getting older and projects around the house aren't as easy for her to handle by herself. But I can't always be there when she needs me. So when her roof started to leak, I went to Home Advisor and found the right pro to help. I can read their reviews, check their credentials, and it's free to use. If anything comes up with my mom's home and I'm not available, Home Advisor always is. Go to homeadvisor.com or download the free app. Home Advisor. Feel the clarity of non drowsy Claritin in relief from symptoms caused by over 200 allergens, like those from Buddy, because stuffed animals are clearly no substitute for real ones. Feel the clarity and live Claritin clear. I'd like to take a moment to address my fellow veterans because I know so many of you have served our country honorably. One of the benefits that we as a country give you as a veteran is the eligibility for a VA loan for up to 100% of your home's value. If you need cash for your family, call New Day USA. With automatic authority from the VA, we can say yes when banks say no. Give us a call. Call now. 1-855-376-1361. Fox Nation. Find out more at foxnation.com now. Hiring was always a huge challenge. Endless hours on job sites with not a lot to show for it. Then I found ZipRecruiter. They figured out hiring. I post my job. They put it all over the web. And they sent me the right people because their technology is smart. ZipRecruiter often sends me the right person in 24 hours. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. Try it for free today at ZipRecruiter.com slash Fox. Hi, I'm Joan London. Today's senior living communities have never been better. 
with amazing amenities like movie theaters, exercise rooms and swimming pools, public cafes, bars and bistros, even pet care services. And there's never been an easier way to get great advice. A Place for Mom is a free service that pairs you with a local advisor to help you sort through your options and find the perfect place. A Place for Mom. You know your family. We know senior living. Together, we'll make the right choice. Fox News alert. Voters heading to the polls right now in Arizona, Florida, and Oklahoma as the primary season winds to a close. Many of these races are another big test of President Trump's influence in the Republican Party. Among today's races, taking the focus, Florida's GOP Senate primary, the president endorsing Republican Governor Rick Scott, who's facing off against businessman Rocky De La Fuente. Also in Florida, the primary race for governor, the president backing Congressman Ron DeSantis over the state's commissioner of agriculture, Adam Putnam. And in Arizona, my home state, three GOP candidates are competing in a fierce Senate primary. Congresswoman Martha McSally, former state Senator Kelly Ward, and former Maricopa County Sheriff Joe Arpaio, all running for the seat now held by Senator Jeff Flake. The race also being watched closely following the death of Arizona Senator John McCain. Arizona Governor Doug Ducey will select the late senator's replacement. So Christian? The president's been pretty successful in his primary endorsements so far. Where do you see this going? Um, it, it's, I think McSally has led in all of the polls, and all the indications are that she'll prevail. Um, and then and she'll have, of course, a full term of the seat vacated by Flake, of course, a senator who was one who was very outspoken against Donald Trump and didn't, frankly, want to face voters again because voters, especially in the Republican primary, probably would have fired him. Mm -hmm. uh, Corker from Tennessee in that same boat, and we'll see about Ben Sass from Nebraska as far as these primary critics of Trump. Trump very popular in Republican circles. Uh, of course, the governor has a challenge in deciding who to fill the seat vacated by uh, late Senator John McCain. Um, you know, choices between perhaps one of the runner-ups in, to, well, probably not Sheriff Joe, you know, it'd probably be Kelly Ward in today's primary, or to go with someone who's already been in Congress like John Kyle, the former senator. Yeah, and his chief of staff, I th also think, is in the running for, for that position. But Lisa, the president has been successful in this all but two out of 37 races. He has successfully endorsed uh, the, the primary candidate for Republicans in Senate, House, and governor's races all across the country. Um, how do you think he's going to fare today? Do you think Ron DeSantis is going to pull it out? or is Pam Bondi's endorsement going to win the day? I, I think DeSantis pulls it off, which would be a good test of President Trump's power in you know, the endorsement process because DeSantis was behind Putnam and now it looks like he's made up that league and, lead and I think he does pull it off. My understanding is they're both polling essentially the same in the general election, so I don't really think it makes too big of a difference. Also, uh, President Trump's approval rating in Florida is around 50 percent now. So I think Democrats are going to try to make this an anti-Trump thing. But I don't necessarily think that's going to be super effective for them there. Uh, also, obviously, in Arizona, I, I think Martha McSally is going to pull it off and win soundly, which is a positive thing. It's a good thing because there will be a tough general election there. And she will most definitely fare better in the general election than Ward or Arpaio would. Yeah, Adrian, there's concern among Republicans in Arizona about uh, the Democratic nominee for Senate, uh, Kirsten Sinema. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, what's your inside information on how they think that race is going to go for the general election? Yeah, I think the DSCC is certainly looking at this race as a uh, potential <clears throat> pickup for Democrats. Uh, Kirsten Sinema is a very moderate uh, Democrat. She's somebody who's very popular in the state. Uh, so we'll see how these three do get out today. Uh, I think going back to, um, you know, another factor to keep, to keep in mind about today is that Governor Ducey, of course, is also in cycle. But he has a responsibility of picking John McCain's replacement. So. He's made it clear that he's going to wait until after uh, the services of Senator McCain, but he is also going to have the pressure of picking somebody who is either in the Donald Trump part of the GOP vein or somebody who is more moderate in line. And so I do think, you think he'll look at this race and use it to read tea leaves? Well, I think he's got a lot of pressure, right? Because number one, he is in cycle. So he has to consider whoever he picks that will potentially affect him. I think that's overblown, him. though. I think all that's overblown. I mean, he's going to be reelected based on his time serving. I, I think whoever he picks to fill uh, Senate, the late Senator McCain's seat is somewhat irrelevant. I just think there's so much being made of, over it with the whole Trump phenomenon and all that. I don't think it's that well, big of a deal. President Trump is very popular in Arizona, so I do think that there is some risk to do see picking someone who is too, quote, moderate on the Republican side. Mm -hmm. um, you know, John McCain did face re-election multiple times and had challengers each of those times from the right. And so Doug Ducey does have to make this decision. But he still always to try won. And, I mean, even against... Yeah, yeah he, so. did, he did always win, but he had this machine behind him, and now it's an, an open playing field. So I do think there's some political risk of Doug Ducey not picking someone who is 
to the right enough and, and on the side of, of Trump rather than uh, more in the middle. And, I don't know. I'm just not Republican. buying that. But I, I, I mean, I, I get the reporting on it. I just I don't buy it. Yeah. And shifting gears to Florida, one of the big questions there is the Democrats are, are really trying to reclaim the governor's uh, seat there in that state. Do you think that's a potential possibility, depending on which candidate they end up with in Florida? Yeah, I think it's a potential possibility. Um, you know, held that for a, a decades. That now, I, I know. In Florida, you know, Florida is such a challenging state. You know, that the saying goes, I think, on the Democratic and Republican side, if you can, if you're a Democrat, if you're a, a campaign operative who can win Florida for your candidate, that's a big, big deal because it is basically three separate states in one state, right? You've got Northern Florida, which is very Southern, very much like Alabama. You've got the middle of the state, which is, you know, sort of the core of Florida. Then you've got the Southern part of the state, which is very, you know, heavily Cuban, uh, a strong Cuban population and a Hispanic population. Are you worried about so, Bill Nelson? Because he's sort of proven to be a pretty horrible candidate. I, really I believe so there are Democrats <laughs> who are worried about polls. Bill Nelson. Um, I believe that the Bill Nelson uh, machine will prevail. Is um, there one, though? Because they're really not. Free. And he's that, embarrassed no, he's himself been, quite He's been reelected so quite a few times. So I actually, I, I think really he will prevail, race. but I think it's going to be a tough race. This, is, I think this, is a, uh, this could be a big change, a big pickup for Republicans in a number of states. There are obvious ones like North Dakota, but Florida and others, uh, specifically Missouri, Montana, West Virginia, um, really a big change and you know a change in this whole blue wave dynamic and another thing with 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 Florida I think likely retaining Republican governor it eliminates the ability of the Democratic Party to generate stars outside of its left-wing progressive right. Washington atmosphere exactly well we will be watching and covering it here right on Fox News Channel but in the meantime Secretary of Defense James Mattis making a new announcement with tensions between the US and North Korea on the rise after President Trump suddenly canceled Secretary of State Mike Pompeo's trip to Pyongyang now the Defense Department saying future military exercises on the peninsula will go forward. So what does this mean for efforts to denuclearize North Korea? We're glad to have former State Department Advisor Christian Wyden here <laughs> to weigh in on that. So stay tuned. We took the step to suspend several of the largest exercises as a good faith measure uh, coming out of the Singapore summit. Uh, we have no plans at this time to suspend any more exercises. After World War II, Hitler's deadliest lieutenant escaped. 15 years later, he was found. We'll get him back here alive. Discover the incredible true story of Operation Finale. For the sake of the world, do not fail. Operation Finale, rated PG-13. Okay, we need to get all your school supplies today. School, grade, done. Done. Hit the snooze button and get low prices on school supplies all summer long, like this case of paper for only $29.99 at Office Depot Office Max. Hi, I'm Ty Young. What if there was an investment strategy where your money was completely protected against market losses? You would go up with the stock market, your gains lock in, and when the market goes down, you don't lose anything. Literally, you go up with your money, never down, forwards and never backwards. What if that investment strategy actually existed? Good news, it does. Get your investor's kit and I'll personally explain on the DVD how it works. You decide if it's right for you. Get your investor's kit. Call 800-557-7379 or tyjyoung.net. To most, he's Phil Mickelson, pro golfer. To me, he's, well, dad. So when his joint pain from psoriatic arthritis got really bad, it scared me. And what could that pain mean? Joint pain could mean joint damage. Enbrel helps relieve joint pain, helps stop irreversible joint damage, and helps skin get clearer. Enbrel may lower your ability to fight infections, serious, sometimes fatal events, including infections, tuberculosis, lymphoma, other cancers, nervous system and blood disorders, and allergic reactions have occurred. Tell your doctor if you've been someplace where fungal infections are common, or if you're prone to infections, have cuts or sores, have had hepatitis B, have been treated for heart failure, or if you have persistent fever, bruising, bleeding, or paleness. Don't start Enbrel if you have an infection like the flu. Since Enbrel, dad's back to being dad. Visit Enbrel.com and use the joint damage simulator to see how your joint damage could be progressing. Ask about Enbrel. Enbrel. FDA approved for over 15 years. Have you been told you need neck or back surgery? If so, you do have a choice. Call Laser Spine Institute and say yes to a pain-free life with our minimally invasive spine surgery. It's safer than open back surgery, letting you get back to living life on your terms. I can lift my son high over my head again. If you have spinal stenosis, bulging or herniated disc, sciatica or other chronic spine conditions, 
Call 1-800-736-BACK now for your free MRI review. Thanks to a less than one inch incision, you'll be up and walking within hours of surgery so you can get back to your life in days instead of months. I feel like Laser Spine Institute was an answer to prayer. Join the thousands of people every year who say goodbye to chronic neck and back pain with Laser Spine Institute. Make today the day you say yes to living a pain-free life. Call 1-800-736-BACK-NOW for your free MRI review. As I was aging, the pain in my hips was getting worse and worse. So I ordered Relief Factor for pain I was having in my neck and my knees. After 30 years of back pain, I have found relief. I am pain free. I love it. I am so glad that I ordered Relief Factor. I am now pain free. Thank you, Relief Factor. Folks, I don't know how to tell you how rewarding it is to hear all the wonderful Relief Factor success stories. Pat Boone again. Let me ask you, are aches and pains keeping you from sleeping through the night or keeping you from taking those nice long walks or playing golf or tennis? You can't really call it living if you can't get around comfortably. The three-week quick start from Relief Factor may be all you need to lower or even eliminate these pains. Here's something you need to know. The majority of people who order the three-week quick start, now only $19.95, go on to order more. Let's see if we can get you out of pain, too. Go to relieffactor.com. Fox News Alert, Defense Secretary James Mattis announcing that the U.S. is not considering plans to suspend additional military exercises on the Korean Peninsula amid renewed tension between the United States and North Korea. Here's Secretary Mattis. We took the step to suspend several of the largest exercises as a good faith measure uh, coming out of the Singapore summit. We will work very closely, as I said, uh, with the Secretary of State and what he needs done, we will certainly do to reinforce his effort. But at this time, there is no discussion about further suspensions. And this comes just days after President Trump abruptly called off Secretary of State Mike Pompeo's planned trip to Pyongyang, the president citing a lack of progress on North Korean denuclearization. The Washington Post reports that the president halted the trip due to a reportedly belligerent letter that Pompeo received from a North Korean official in response. North Korean state media criticizing the Trump administration writing, the U.S. is hatching a criminal plot to unleash war against North Korea and commit a crime which deserves merciless divine punishment. Hmm. Uh, pretty strong words there from North Korea amongst the state media. I mean, how seriously do we take those words? They, they seem to have some pretty creative writers over there uh, in North Korea. <laughs> they do. 1950s um, style propaganda. Right, exactly. <laughs> and to a certain extent, that, of course, is aimed for their own people. Uh, but at the same time, we do receive the messages here in the United States as well. Uh, so what does this mean going forward? Are we stuck at an impasse? And, oh. the, and the fact that Mattis has said, you know, uh, things will be back to business as usual if, we, if you can't move towards denuclearization. Right. A bunch of signals now from the president and from Mattis that things are we are nearing sort of the end phase potentially of our patients. You know, the North Koreans have got to stop sending messages like that because, yeah, they're important. And more importantly, Donald Trump thinks they're important. You remember the Singapore summit originally was on and then they came out with a statement, the North Koreans threatening uh, Vice President Pence, threatening to nuke America. And Trump said, thanks, but no, thanks for canceling it. And then North Korea did an about face and it was back on. Um, incidentally, that previous digression um, came after Kim Jong-un met with the Chinese uh, leader, Xi Jinping, in Dalian, China. And that the president has identified as, as basically a factor causing North Korea to go from, well, maybe they're willing to come in from the cold and reform to back to bad behavior. And the president pointed that out again recently. And also, you know, he, he understands China's leverage mm -hmm. over North Korea. He's not the first president to do that. He is the first president in recent times to link it to trade. And that's what he did in a tweet saying basically, exactly. you know, this is why they're misbehaving. Yeah, yeah, and that was particularly fascinating. Yeah, go ahead, Keith. I say it's a very good thing that the uh, military exercises are back on. As Mattis said, they were taken away in, in good faith or suspended, but it was also at the time suspending a legal action, which are military exercises with allies in exchange for the stopping of illegal belligerent behavior, which is threatening the United States with nuclear war. And now that we haven't seen any progress, I'm happy to see that th those things are back on, despite, as the president said, the costs of them. I'm curious to know if the letter, the belligerent letter that was sent to Mike Pompeo, Secretary of State, was as big as the letter that was sent uh, to President Trump in the Oval Office. I don't know if that had anything to do with it, 
it, but it would be funny to see if they sent the same type of letter. Yeah, and it'll be interesting to see if a meeting ever does get rescheduled and how much China would ultimately play in that, since that seems to be where a lot of the leverage is leaning right now. Go ahead, Lisa. Well, I was going to say, I, I think, too, you know, Remember that Kim Jong-un came to the negotiating table because of President Trump's maximum pressure campaign, ramping up sanctions aggressively against North Korea and also with the military threats as, as well. You know, remember back in the day, Kim Jong-un was rocket man and fire and fury and, you know, you better be afraid of us and sort of ramped up rhetoric that Kim Jong-un and North Korea really haven't seen from prior administrations. Um, so I think that still have it retaining some of that pressure and Kim Jong-un knowing that we're not afraid to go back to that point with maximum pressure is important because President Trump has repeatedly said, I'm not afraid to walk away from the table. So I think it's important to demonstrate that we aren't because one of the big problems with President Obama and the Iran deal was the fact that he that was his legacy. That was what he was so concerned about that he wouldn't walk away even if it's a, it, it's a crappy deal and he still signed it. So I, I think it's important that North Korea knows that we're not willing to sign a bad deal and we're willing to walk away if we don't get uh, something that is okay with us. But I think it's also important to take a step back and remember that in June of this year, just a couple months ago, Donald Trump and Kim Jong-un stood together with the United States flag and the North Korean flag and said, and Donald Trump said, North Korea is no longer a threat. And now we are seeing this whatever diplomacy, whatever you want to call it, completely unravel. So I think the administration needs to come forward, set the record straight with the American people, and put in place a diplomatic process that will actually yield well, this the results that we president, want. President, this administration is certainly trying things that are new, which can make what comes a little uh, less predictable than perhaps things have been in, in prior years and under prior administrations. So where could we potentially go from here? Doesn't that mean there's a, a, a broad spectrum of possibilities? There is. And I don't think we're worse off for what the president has tried to do. I mean, we've gone about a year now longer without a North Korean nuclear test, without ballistic missile testing. They've dismantled partially their rocket assembly facility, their nuclear test site. So these are, are good signs. And also, we sort of changed the flip the script where China was, was the facilitator of all diplomacy in this in both the Clinton and the Bush administration, in which I first served, um, to one where we are dealing directly and our leverage can, can come into effect. So it's very easy to go back to maximum pressure because we never really stopped doing that, except for um, that minor military uh, drill that now, you know, rescheduled or back mm -hmm. on. And those are important to keep South yeah, a Korea. small sign right. forward. Yeah. Right, right, right. And also, there's a lot we can sanction as well. We can go after the money. Um, North Korea's uh, illicit funds from abroad is how the regime survives. In 2006, we sanctioned a bank that was laundering their money. The bank was in Macau. A lot of uh, pressure both on the bank and on the really near death sentences for both and the bank and the regime. And there have been some signals that that could be the, the right. next thing coming. All right. Well, coming up, uh, liberal groups fighting against the confirmation of Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh, now going after Senate Democrats who have not committed to opposing him, whether the resistance could work or will it damage certain Democrats. As we challenge the Kavanaugh nomination to understand that we've got to knock on doors and take back the House and gut this nomination. Hi, I'm William Devane. You've heard me talk about how smart it is to buy gold, but do you know what else is smart? Silver. There's a growing global demand for silver, so don't miss out. I buy my silver from Roslyn Capital. Buying silver has been an important way to accumulate wealth for thousands of years and a great way to start investing. There are silver coins, silver bars, and even full bags of silver, and Roslyn has them all. And with Roslyn, you're always guaranteed the best prices, the fastest shipping, and best customer service around. I like that, and you will too. So when it comes to buying gold or silver, call Roslyn Capital. Call now for your free gold, silver, and IRA transfer kits. And for a limited time, Roslyn is offering a $1,000 discount free to qualifying new customers. Call 800-630-8900. 800-630-8900. 800-630-8900. Your brain changes as you get older, but Prevagen helps your brain with an ingredient originally discovered in jellyfish. In clinical trials, Prevagen has been shown to improve short-term memory. Prevagen, healthier brain, better life. You've got to be strong. Remember Janet? She got cash back shopping with Ebates and hasn't been skeptical since. 
Psst. And they'll send you a check. Oh. Shop your favorite stores. Get cash back. Ebates. Join today for a $10 bonus. If you have moderate to severe plaque psoriasis or psoriatic arthritis, little things can be a big deal. That's why there's Otesla. Otesla is not an injection or a cream. It's a pill that treats differently. For psoriasis, 75% clearer skin is achievable with reduced redness, thickness, and scaliness of plaques. And for psoriatic arthritis, Otesla is proven to reduce joint swelling, tenderness, and pain. And the Otesla prescribing information has no requirement for routine lab monitoring. Don't use if you're allergic to Otesla. Otesla may cause severe diarrhea, nausea, or vomiting. Tell your doctor if these occur. Otesla is associated with an increased risk of depression. Tell your doctor if you have a history of depression or suicidal thoughts or if these feelings develop. Some people taking Otesla reported weight loss. Your doctor should monitor your weight and may stop treatment. Other side effects include upper respiratory tract infection and headache. Tell your doctor about all the medicines you take and if you're pregnant or planning to be. Oh, Tesla, show more of you. This is not a bed. It's a revolution in sleep. The new Sleep Number 360 Smart Bed is on sale now from $8.99 during Sleep Number's biggest sale of the year. It senses your movement and automatically adjusts to keep you both comfortable. It even helps with this. So you wake up ready to put your pedal to the metal. And now all beds are on sale. Save 50% on the new Sleep Number 360 Limited Edition Smart Bed, plus 24-month financing on all beds, only for a limited time. Sleep Number, proven quality sleep. This one looks empty. What do you think? Oh, dude, stop. What? I got a ring. What are we supposed to do? Well, tell you what I'd do. I'd start running. Let's, let's maybe just now, go. gentlemen, okay. hustle! Go, go, go. Does your doorbell do that? Ours does. Get tough on crime with the Ring Video Doorbell. Keep your home and your neighborhood safe. Available at ring.com. For those who are driven by purpose, who are building others instead of just wealth, giving back and never giving up, TIAA will help you live your definition of success. Whether you have $500 or $5 million, Investing, advice, banking, retirement. TIAA. Start today at TIAA.org. Fox News Alert Progressive Groups launching a campaign this week to block President Trump's Supreme Court Justice nominee, Brett Kavanaugh. The Whip the Vote campaign is aimed at 24 Senate Democrats who have not yet vowed to oppose Kavanaugh. The hearings for his confirmation begin one week from today. Three of those Democratic senators are the <coughs> usual suspects, Joe Donnelly, Heidi Heitkamp, and Joe Manchin. They're from red states and face re-election in November. The three voted for Trump's first high court nominee, Neil Gorsuch, and they are the most likely to vote for Kavanaugh. At one event yesterday, speakers went after Republicans Susan Collins and Lisa Murkowski, claiming that their decision on Kavanaugh will determine the future of abortion rights in America. Watch. You both hold the fate of approximately 93 million women of childbearing age in your hands. With this vote on Brett Kavanaugh, you will be defining the future of these women, these 93 million women, with one vote. Stop it! Stop it now! And make sure we have a Democratic House to have a break on this president after the 2018 elections. Adrian, really, 90, the lives of 93 million childbearing age women are dependent on the Kavanaugh nomination? Well, look, here's what we've got to remember. Donald Trump, during the campaign, made it clear that any Supreme Court nominee that he had the opportunity to nominate if he were president, he would, te he would run a litmus test on whether or not they would overturn Roe v. Wade. And he wanted nominees who would vow to overturn Roe v. Wade. So that is what is at stake here. There is a lot at stake. And that's why you're seeing all of these progressive organizations from Demand Justice to NARAL to, I mean, you name them. They're all aligned. The resistance is aligned here to put pressure on Senate Democrats to oppose this nomination. So it's a smart tactic. It shows that, that Democrats are energized and enthusiastic. But at the same time, there is a lot at stake. So to try to downplay this and yeah, suggest that Kavanaugh would not do this 
is, is false. But because again, I find, it, I find it very clear. interesting that Democrats still are claiming to speak for 93 million women as if they all speak the same or think the same. But Christian, is this just another delay tactic by Democrats that is futile considering uh, that there are some Democrats who probably vote for Kavanaugh. He essentially has a nomination in the bag. Well, I love everything about this story and this effort. As a Trump Republican, I think these should do exactly do more what they're advising here, which is to send these senators who are all facing tough re-elections in state that over states that overwhelmingly voted for Trump on a kamikaze mission. Kavanaugh is going to be confirmed. Uh, the big Democrat complaint against him is that he isn't vetted. He was a federal judge for 12 years. I think we know what he thinks before that he was in the White House. He was vetted for that position, too. And I think it just shows how politicized and how absurd this has come. If you look back, Elena Kagan confirmed, but with 63 votes, quite a few Republicans voting in favor of her. Go back to Ruth Gator Ginsburg, Ginsburg, 97 yes votes in the Senate, and yeah. now expecting that all Democrats would vote against him. Incidentally, in Kavanaugh's rounds with senators, he has told people that Roe versus Wade is settled law. And the focus of social conservatism has changed. Frankly, it's, right. it's political correctness and other rights, not so much that. And the problem with the argument that Adrian is making is when you drill in these red states like Manchin, Donnelly, and Heidkamp, the majority of voters in those states want Kavanaugh confirmed. And I guarantee you that Joe Manchin cares more about what Trump supporters in his state that went for President Trump by 42 points, what they care about versus a bunch of progressive hacks. So the point is, these arguments that they're making, it has taken a toll on Kavanaugh, nationally speaking, in his numbers. But what is important is what these red state Democrats care about and what they're hearing. And they're hearing more. They care more, again, about what Trump supporters and people in their state that voted for him care about than a bunch of, you know, crazy progressives. Well, first of all, these, these quote-unquote crazy progressives that you speak of are actually representing the views of a lot of Americans. So the left-wing base they are, of the party. They are representing the views. states like Indiana, but I, West Virginia, or North Dakota. But I will, well, no, there are a lot of Democrats in those states who well, do not a lot of crazy people confirmed. there, but I'm talking about voters that these senators that are running for re-election in red states, what they care about. Well, what I will, re I will concede that if you are Joe Donnelly, if you are Joe Manchin, if you are Heidi Heitkamp and you are in cycle, this is a tough vote. And that's all the it takes. The Democrats have to show that we're fighting, and we are, and we are putting the op we are putting the pressure on these senators to at least give a very, very, very... I want to get Molly I think it'll be here. really, yeah. really tough, uh, particularly in West Virginia, as you brought up, uh, Lisa, because this is a state that, that President Trump has come back to several times. Uh, as far as coal country is concerned, there are a lot of voters that are way behind him. And so his popularity be, uh, has declined significantly in West Virginia. It would still be very challenging for Senator Manchin to come out and, and be the one that, that, that draws the wall on Kavanaugh. I don't know that, politically speaking, somewhere down the road, uh, he would he would need to make that well, the Republicans are behind him too, to so this is happening. Right. The nomination hearings for uh, Brett Kavanaugh start on Tuesday, and we will be covering that here as well. In the meantime, President Trump announcing a tentative new trade deal with Mexico to replace NAFTA. But for now, Canada is not part of it. Could our neighbor to the north spoil the deal, and can the president make good on his campaign promises to remake trade? We'll debate that up next. Managing my type 2 diabetes wasn't my top priority until I held her. I found my Traceba reason. Now I'm doing more to lower my A1C. I take Traceba once a day. Traceba controls blood sugar for 24 hours for powerful A1C reduction. We'd been counting down to his retirement. It was our Traceba reason. He needs insulin to control his high blood sugar and at 